Well, guys, welcome back. Uh, this is Meldron here, guys. Welcome back to the World of Warcraft. Welcome back to the WoW tutorial. This is part two. We're going to be going over a few more in-depth things today. First thing we're going to go over is user interface, which I briefly touched upon in the first video. I want to go a little further. And then I'm going to go over into race, races, abilities, classes, and factions. While we're doing this, we'll be doing some questing. So if you remember here, where we left off, there was three quests we had to do. Samuel's Remains, Buried, which is Maria's Last Wish, Scavenging Death Now, which is Scavenge Goods, and Young Nightweb's Hollow. Before we go any further, though, let's go into user interface options. I'm going to go over this kind of quickly, um, <coughs> as it's not a huge thing, but it is can make your you can make or break your gaming experience. So if we hit the Escape key, or if we hit System Information, which is down here, let's start with Video. So this is your resolution. I'm not going to change any of my things, but I'm going to go over what they are. Resolution is a resolution just like your screen resolution, okay? I always go to the highest setting. I'm running on a pretty uh, good computer with a nice resolution monitor, so I'm going to go with the highest one possible. Remember, this is an old game, so a lot of the computers that are out now are going to be able to handle max graphics. So that's resolution. Refresh rate is um, <coughs> how quickly the mon monitor flickers, basically. Um, I'm not going to mess with this because I'm recording, but basically the higher the better, okay? So, higher the hertz, the better, basically, is how that works, okay? This multi-sampling, um, <coughs> it's kind of, it, it makes the, the model smoother, um, so the stuff that you're looking at, um, the edges of each model smoother instead of, like, blockier. I go to the highest setting, again, 24-bit color, 8 uh, in depth 8x multi-sample. All these other things here, the tool tips are very, very useful. Um, but these things are going to are gonna make your gaming experience better. I always go windowed mode so I can boot off to my other monitor easily. Um, and I maximize it, of course. Uh, and then I also like to shrink my user UI bar, my action bar. When you, if you don't resize this, it's really big. And you don't have to do that big. You can actually make it smaller so you have more room for your chat. And if you click this and move this here and there, it will change, okay? Uh, brightness, I don't really mess with. I use my desktop settings. All of these are the actual aesthetics of the game. The blades of grass, how far you can see, you know, how how good the rain looks, how good all these things look. So I put, I max all these out. Um, and you can mess around with these and see what's best for you. If you start to lose, if your computer starts to run a little slow, you can move these down. But again, guys, nowadays, you guys should be able, and most computers, I have another laptop I use that has no graphics card, has an integrated graphics card from Windows, um, you know, and it, it's fine. It, it's able to let, let it go high, okay? So that's your video options. <clears throat> Audio uh, sound is also so explanatory. I like to loop my music because when the music runs out, I like it to keep going. I use system default for my game output, so if I'm, if I'm using my headphones like I am now, it'll automatically switch to the headphones. Um, this sound channel thing, I think it comes into play if you're using like multiple sound systems. Uh, I use low. It doesn't change the quality of my music. I don't believe it does anyway. So that's fine. Master volume, again, is just master volume. But you can also tweak each thing. Sounds are like, you know, the sword clanging. Music is, of course, music in the background. And ambience are things like wolves howling, um, the rain, things like that. You can lower those individual channels however you want. Uh, I use high sound quality because it just sounds better. Um, as he says, it's decreased to improve performance. Back in the day, people had to pick and choose what they wanted to do if they didn't have a very good computer. Uh, nowadays, you know, we don't, we, we don't have to worry about that as much. Okay? Interfaces. Now, this is the one that you can customize to your own controls, okay? It's what you want. Uh, I'm going to go through these, again, relative clicking. Sticky targeting is if you target something. Let's target this guy right here. And if you, if it, if you click this, if I click off the map, it won't deselect the target. I like clicking at, off the target. I like being able to click the target, then click off of him, and it clears the targeting. Okay? I like that. So I leave these unchecked. Um, so this is again, this is improved frame rates. Um, I wouldn't worry about this unless you're really starting to notice that you're having graphical problems. Um, auto dismount and flight. Um, this is not something you have to worry about in vanilla, so let's not even go there. It has to do with flying mounts, and that's only in Burning Crusade, it's only when you're level 70. Way ahead of where we are right now, okay? Um, I let, so AFK, if the computer knows you're AFK for long enough, it'll boot you off the game, it'll log you off. So I like to be able to hit my move button, so when you log, when you go AFK, your character sits down like he is now. 
but I like to be able to hit the move key and just auto AFK, off, so AFK myself off, okay? You can block trades, so you can trade with other players in the game if you click them. Now, there's no players here, but if you would, if there's a player, you can click them, right-click their portrait, and you can actually trade with them, okay? You can trade things. We'll go into that when we go through party systems. That is something that we'll be doing with a friend of mine in a later episode. Open loot window at mouse. Um, so wherever my mouse cursor is, that's where the loot window opens up. I, you know, I shift click and loot auto loot pretty much myself, so I don't care about this. And auto loot only. Auto loot. This is great if you're playing on a Burning Crusade server, guys. It makes looting a lot faster. But I'm leaving it off to make it more similar to vanilla. And I will briefly, very briefly, when I get on the vanilla server, when I get on Chronos vanilla, I will very briefly go into the interface options of vanilla. They're basically the same as this, but there's less options. Okay. So it's going to be very brief. Combat. Um, attack on assist. I don't really use this. Um, I don't, I'm don't. i not going to type in slash assist. I'm not going to do that. Um, so I'm not, I'm not really worried about that. You basically, you know, we went over in the last video with the difference between left-clicking and right-clicking. Uh, right-clicking is to attack. Left-click is to select. So here's selecting. Here's attacking. You know, left. So left-click, right-click. Two different things. Um... Auto attack, auto shoot, we went over that again. You want to keep this checked. There's no reason to uncheck this. When you are targeting a mob, you want to auto attack that mob. That's one thing you want to do. Um, auto self cast, very important for healers. When you're healing, you're going to select players in your party over here on the left. You're going to select the player and then use a heal. However, if you have no one selected, you want that heal to go to yourself. You don't have to click yourself and heal. Okay? You can. But you also have the option of having nothing selected, and when you use that healing spell, it automatically heals you. Okay? It's very important. Um, stop auto-attacking when you switch targets. Uh, I leave this unchecked, because when I switch targets, I'm attacking that target, and that's what I want to do. Okay? Target of target. Very, very nice, especially when you're healing. So when I'm clicking this mob right here. When he starts attacking me, watch, you'll see. Oh. You can see here below his name that now I am his target. When you're tank, when you're a DPS in a, in a dungeon, this will become a lot more important. And when you're healing, this is a, kind of important as well. You want to target the monster that the tank is target is selecting because it helps him maintain aggro on that monster. We've talked about aggro. Aggro is like the wantingness of a monster to kill someone. You want the tank to have aggro. You want monsters to kill the tank, not you, because you're not equipped to deal with that kind of onslaught of attacks as the tank is. And you want you also want to limit the, the, the work the healer has to do. Okay. Um, so when you're in a dungeon, you should select your tank and see who he's hitting. That's the person you want to hit, and you can select the tank and then select his target. Okay. So that's the, that's very important. We go into that more when we do when we do dungeons and when we do we we do. Um, instances. I like seeing cast bars. This is not an option in vanilla. Let's not talk about that right now. Basically, this allows you to see enemy casters and what they're casting, so you can interrupt the casts. Okay, display. Show cloak, show helmet, show buff durations up here. Uh, I don't have a buff on right now. We're going to go over buffs in a second. Rotate minimap. I don't like this because I like seeing my minimap. I move my character, my minimap is stagnant. If I, stagnant, if I click this, the minimap rotates with me. Personally, I prefer this. But you can put whatever you want, okay? Um, so, I don't really use this. It uh, shows a screen edge flash when you have a full screen UI up and you're in combat. So that means that if I had my map up and everything, that my screen would flash while I'm in combat. Uh, that's good to have. You rarely ever see it, but that's not a big deal. Detailed loot information, you want this. Um, uncheck this to hide the individual loot roll messages and only show the winner. Um, I like seeing the full detail. I want to see what everyone rolls. We'll go over rolling um, of loot again when we're doing a dungeon. Show free bag space. This is not an option in vanilla, but it tells you... I think it's not an option in vanilla, but it tells you how many free bag slots you have. And we'll go over that as well. So two things before I move forward. I want to go over buffs, and I want to go over inventory. Um, actually, I will go over buffs in a second. Um, but let me go over here first and show you what, uh, what, what a debuff and a buff is. Before I do that, let's look down here at inventory. I was lucky enough, while, you, while, I, while I was offline, I picked up two bags. Everyone starts off with a backpack. A, back slot, a backpack is an 18-slot bag. Actually, let me clear this out real quick. 
So you have 18 slots. You can hold 18 things. Most things, as you, as you can see, stack in fives. So this chip claw, it only stacks up to five. I can't carry 10 of these in one stack. It'll go to a next stack, five, and then to four. Uh, it sounds confusing, but basically it, it, you have to make sure you have enough inventory space. So there are some consumables, like these, okay, like this mushroom, you'll see it's stacked to 10. Consumables and cloth are allowed to be stacked up to 20. Crafting materials are allowed to be stacked up to 20. But for some reason, gray items you pick off of monsters can only stack up to 5 before it makes a new stack. Very important when trying to remember. Inventory space is very important in this game. So I want to click cancel this for a second. And go over vendoring real quick. I know we're going over a lot in a very long time, but just um, bear with me. So in my bag, I have I have mushroom capsule, which I can eat for health, and I have a hearthstone. You don't want to get rid of a hearthstone. You don't want to get rid of food unless you really don't need it. Okay? But this stuff, I have no use for. Okay? I'm going to sell it. So I'm going to right-click all this stuff, and I'm going to get the gold, get the copper from it. Okay? I'm going to use that. Now, see these pants? I don't need them. But let's say I sold it to the vendor, and oh shit, I need those pants. I didn't want to sell them. You can go to buyback to tab over here, guys. Buyback lets you buy back something you sold to a vendor. However, if you log out for, I think, more than 15 minutes, this buyback screen disappears, so you're screwed. Please be careful and watch what you're selling to vendors. Make sure you don't need it. And, I'm, and I believe once this buyback tab is filled up with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12 items, it erases the, most, the oldest thing you sold, so you can never get that thing back. So always look at what you're selling, okay? Uh, and then you can buy things from merchants by right-clicking as well. We don't need any of this stuff, but you can buy things from merchants as well. When I start buying things, I'll tell you what I'm buying, okay? Alright, we did inventory. Let's talk about buffs. I'm not going to bring the interface menu back up until we look at buffs. I've cl shift-clicked our three spells here. Three spells, three quests. I'm going to go do this Nightweb's Hollow one, where we kill some spiders, okay, guys? So while I'm killing those spiders, some of them will, will, will make... Um, will do a debuff on me. So buffs are positive, debuffs are negative. A buff is something either you or another party member, an ally, gives you to make yourself stronger. So I start fighting this spider. Start doing damage. These young Nightweb spiders don't do the debuff the adults do. Um, but as you see, now I have enough rage, I will put Battle Shout on. Battle Shout... You see it up here. Increases your melee attack power by 16. We briefly talked about this last episode. But this is a buff. Buffs always show up on the top. Right here. And a buff is a positive thing. Okay, guys? So buffs give us something. They give us attack power. They give us stamina. They give us intellect. They give us, what, they give us something good. Sometimes We can have a lot of buffs on at a time. There's no limit to how many buffs we can have. However, there is a limit to how many times we can give the same buff. I can't give myself two battle shouts. It's a non-stacking buff. It doesn't stack, okay? However, there are buffs in the game and debuffs in the game that stack, okay? So, let's say that there was a, there are some buffs in the game where I can get multiple buffs of that and it will continue to increase that beneficial effect the more stacks I have. Conversely, there are stackable debuffs. There are things that are bad for us and they can stack multiple times. Let's say it's a damage over time effect, like a poison. Sometimes a poison can stack. Each stack of that poison is additional damage per second to us. Something we have to watch out for. Okay. Um, so let's, real quick, before I move on in the interface, let's go over it and see one of these adults, see if we can get this a debuff. So I have this buff up still. It's clicking off because I need to refresh it. Because buffs, buffs and debuffs don't last forever. Okay, this is an adult. This is a nightweb spider. Okay, so we're gonna start hitting him. I'm not gonna do any special attacks. Cause I'm gonna see if he'll put the debuff on me. Give him enough time to do it. Let's see. Does he? No. Let's try the next one. There's two over here. I pulled them both, so I gotta be kind of careful. So I'm gonna start using special attacks now, guys, because I don't want to die. Okay. As you notice, I'm, I'm applying rend to the target. 
Ren is a damage over time effect that warriors have that I trained to level 4. So when I put Ren on the target, it will bleed the target. Okay, so I'm putting a look at the tooltip up here. Alright. It does additional damage. It bleeds them out. You always want to apply these bleeds because they give additional damage. Bleeding for 5 plus a percentage of the weapon damage every 3 seconds. So the more damage your weapon does, the more powerful your rent is. So that's also important. So two-handed weapons are going to put more bleed damage than a one-handed weapon because two-handed damage, two-handed weapons, for the most part, if they're on the same level, do more damage. Okay? So I'm going to apply rent. I'm going to heroic strike, and then also make sure my battle shot is up. Okay. So far, I haven't had one debuff. So on this guy, I'm going to try to let him do it. I'm not going to hit him with anything special. I'm going to try to get a debuff. Okay. I know these guys poison. I've seen it before. So trust me, I'm not crazy. Okay. Weak poison. One nature damage inflicted every three seconds. This. So this is an example of a debuff, guys. They don't last forever. But they do damage to us. I'm being poisoned. Okay, so just to keep in mind, always look, keep a look up over here and see what's happening. I we kill this guy pretty quick. I bleed up on him. I'm heroic striking him. He should go down pretty quickly. Okay. All right. Man, one more of these guys to kill, and we'll get the hell out of here, and then show you some more interface options. Ooh, I pulled two. Oh, I pulled three. I'm out of here. Guys, what I'm doing right now is very important. I'm being stunned. This is another debuff. It's called Dazed. What I'm doing right now, guys, is I know that I can't beat all three of these spiders. Oh, I went the wrong way. <laughs> and I think I may die here. If I get out of this, it'll be it'll be a miracle. Oh, Alright, I got out. Okay. Every monster has a range that will run after you. They're usually about the same, but... I can't even get out of there with my life. But it's a good way of explaining what, what you... You don't have to stay and fight, guys. You guys can run, and they will reset. It's called a mob resetting. They'll run back to the point they were at. They will go back to full health. So if you if you whittle down a health of one of these monsters and think, oh, I'll go back and kill them now. No, as soon as they reset, guys, they go back to full health. Okay? All right. I'm going to kill this last adult spider before I do anything so I can get this part of the quest done and go back outside. Here's one here. Right, I pulled two again. That's okay. Two I should be able to handle. Battle shot up so I get more damage. Throw strike. He should be dead. Let's move to this one. Rin. Make sure the bleed effects on the target. Want a heroic strike now? Okay, let's get the heck out of here. Alright. Okay. Let's go back to the interface options. Okay, we were on interface, and we were down on... I think we were down on buff durations. Yes, we were. Okay. Alright, screen edge flash. We did that. Detailed loot information. Show free bag space. I want that. Show clock, which is up here. I want that as well. Uh, world PvP objectives. Not a big deal in vanilla. We'll talk about this later. Okay? Let me go into PvP as we're leveling. Alright, quests. Instant quest text. Very important. Unless you want to see the quest text scroll down, it's it's tiring, okay? Let's keep that on. We want to keep on automatic quest tracking. Whenever we kill a quest item, let's say we forgot to track our quest. Remember, tracking a quest is shift-clicking the quest in our quest log. Say we forgot we killed one of these spiders, then the quest will automatically start tracking. This is only in Burning Crusade, okay? Mature language filter, I don't mind cursing, so I leave this off. Chat bubbles, I like to see the chat bubbles both in party and myself. I like to see this, the chat bubble. Wow, over here if you can see it behind the screen. I'll do it over here. Wow, see that? I like to see chat bubbles, especially when I'm in a party as well, so I know who's talking. Um, spam filter uh, on chat, I don't. I leave this unchecked. I never really had a problem with that before. Uh... Check to show chat window immediately among. So I'm not sure what this is, but I don't. Yeah, I like to. So I'm not in the guild. I'll go over guilds in another point. But I like to see when a guild member comes online. So I leave this checked. Uh, I also like to join the guild channel. So I also ch so each when it, if you're in a guild, they have a chat channel that's specific to the guild. I also like joining that. These options are all to do with chat. Um, 
again, I don't, I don't really like these, uh, checking these, um, simple chat, icons in chat, um, if you read the tooltips, you can see this a little bit. Action bars are important. I was like checking the action bars on, so I have these additional action bars. Okay, if you see here, I have you know Willow Forsaken. I'm gonna move it around. There's all these extra action bars I have, guys. I like these. I like having them up. I don't like to see them, so I leave that unchecked. Names. My name gets distracting. NPC names gets really distracting. Uh, if I had a companion, sure I'd see that. Guild names. I like to see that underneath the person. So I click on if I player player characters and they're running around. I like to see their names. Um, I leave that on. So friendly players, I leave on. Titles, I leave on. Enemy players, I like to see people's names and their pets and everything. But my name is just a little bit too much. I know my name. I don't need to see it. And I definitely need to see this all day. That just gets tiring. Unless you, unless you need to find a specific monster, this is awesome. If Like in our first quest where we had to kill us two different zombies but they're right next to each other, this is a great thing to check. Okay, check. Combat text, we went over this briefly in the first video. Um, I like to see the target's damage. I like to see periodic damage on the target. I like to see all those things. I like to see healing that's done on me. I like to see all these things. Floating combat text was when we saw that the you know the button my damage is is coming on the screen. I like to see all this stuff. Okay, so that's really important. I'm gonna start killing this stuff while we're talking because it's it's quest items and I'm gonna get them done uh, so we can talk about more in the video. Okay, status text. Um, so if you click this, it, it shows up here in your top left the damage, your health percentage, your your rage percentage. I really don't care about that. I just to see. I know when I'm about to die. I can do it for my pet, but I don't have a pet because I'm a warrior. Uh, party. You can see all your party percentages. Again, I'm not healing, so it's not really a big deal. I I, I do like to see the percentage of my target though, so I know how much ha left I have to go, because some monsters have really big health pools, so I like to see this. I like to see percentages instead of numbers, so I can uncheck this to actual raw numbers or percentages. If you look at my experience bar down here, guys, it's at 38% done to level 5. You can uncheck that and get the actual number of experience points. I like percentages. And then this is the actual show, the stuff on your experience bar. I can uncheck that off and on. If you look down at the experience bar, you'll see that. Okay. Party and raid. Um... Party background um, shows a background behind party members. I'm not really, I, I don't really do that. Um, I think it has to do with their nameplates uh, over here on the left when we have a party. We'll talk about that for party. Uh, I like to see portraits in the party, so I, I leave this unchecked. Um, we, we're not in a raid. We will go over that later. That's definitely something that's advanced options. Uh, party members' pets. Yeah, I like to see their pets because I like to see if they're dying or not. I don't know why, but I just do. So you'll have your party member here on the left, and then their pet below them. If they have a pet, they're a warlock or a hunter. Uh, dispellable debuffs. This is really important if you can dispel debuffs. So again, this is not this is not vanilla. This is only Burning Crusade. So I'm only going to go over it briefly. But if you're a healer or a person who can dispel a debuff off a target off one of your friendly targets, it'll show those only on your interface and say, "Hey, this guy's got a, a debuff that you can handle. You need to get rid of that for that player." Healers can dispel debuffs, certain healers. Um, we'll go into that later, though. Um, uh, this is... Well, again, we'll get into this. This is only for raids. Oh, and this is raid as well. Way too, too uh, high-end for us right now. Camera. Follow terrain. Okay. Now, when I run up this hill, I leave follow terrain on it'll automatically shift the camera to look up while I'm walking up a hill. If I uncheck it, and if I keep the camera down, it'll keep the camera down while I'm running a hill. I like to keep, I like to control my own camera, guys, so I don't, you know, if you, if you right-click on the, on, on the screen and move it around, that's you controlling the camera. I leave this unchecked. Head bob only goes to first person. If you want, guys, you can scroll all the way in and go to first person view. If head bob is unchecked, it doesn't look like his head's bobbing when he's running. If you check this, has a slight head bob. If you can see it, it's very slight. Again, not a big deal. Water collision. Set the camera to be above water when your character is above water. I keep this checked because I want to know when I'm above water because I want to make sure I don't um, 
I want to make sure I know I'm above water because I want to make sure that I'm not uh, out of breath. Okay. We'll talk about that when we have actually water near us. Smart pivot I keep checked because it makes sure the camera knows what it's doing. Max distance I always keep it high so I can zoom all the way out. That's great when you're tanking. Okay, because you want to see everything. But I'll zoom in for now. Uh, auto follow speed is, is the speed of the camera and how and um, just the camera movement speed and always always in smart following styles. I keep this uh, in the middle. That's default. And I always keep smart. Okay? Again, you can mess around with this all you want. Mouse. I don't inverse the mouse. I like to keep a higher sensitivity because I like to move my mouse quickly. And mouse look speed I keep high. Just the speed at which you can turn the camera. So I like that. Okay, I like to be able to move the camera pretty quickly. Click the moves if you like we want to play like old school Warcraft. Uh, and uh, you can use your mouse clicks to move your character to that destination. Uh, I'm not really into that, okay? Uh, it's like old school RTS Warcraft. I'm good. I want to move my either my keys or my mouse. Okay. Help is help. You can turn on tutorials, which are those little things uh, in the beginning when you play. You'll have exclamation points that pop up. You may want to read those for a while until you start until you until you get more comfortable with the game. I leave it off. I like the loading screen tips. When you're in loading screens, it gives you a little tip at the bottom. I like that. I like enhanced tool tips. I like to know what things are. Um, so I like to know. So it says heroic strike, a strong attack that increases. If you uncheck that, guys, <coughs> that will be gone. And I'll just say heroic strike. Not enough. I like seeing that stuff. I like knowing what it does. Okay, and how much rage it costs. Um, this is literally the little box that's showing up right now. You can uncheck that box. If I uncheck this, oh, it still does. That's weird. I'm not sure. And this has to do with Lua as a, as a programming language. We're not going to worry about that. All right, I'm going to hit OK. You have to hit OK, or else all your changes will not be saved. All right, we've got UI out of the way. Let's start getting these quests knocked out. While I'm doing quests, I'm going to put Battle Shout back up. Make sure Battle Shout's always on if you're a warrior. While I'm doing quests, let's talk about bags. So everyone starts with an 18 slot backpack, okay? As you're leveling, bags may drop or you may buy new bags. You have five inventory slots. I picked up two green bags from other monsters. So I, so if you right-click them in your... when it, So that when you pick them up, they'll be in your bag like this. Okay. If you right click, it'll equip it. And then, if you notice my bag space went up to 19, if I put it here, free bag space is 12. If I right click and equip, free bag space is 19. Why? Because I'm wearing these bags now. If you click them, there are your other bags. You have more inventory slots. Very, very important. Inventory is very important, guys. You want to make sure you have enough inventory space to do what you have to do. Okay? And that's basically inventory. When you pick up keys, there's keys in the game, you'll get a keychain slot that goes right here. Where my mouse cursor is. This thing over here, real quick, is your latency and frame rate. My latency is kind of high because I'm playing in the United States, playing on a European server. My internet's not the best. My frame rate is 60 FPS. It could be better, but as you guys can see, it's pretty smooth. Okay, let's knock out these quests. And while we're doing this, let's talk about classes, races, and factions. So there are nine classes in Vanilla WoW. Um, and there are four races per faction. The classes are plate, they're split into plate wearing classes, uh, mail wearing classes, uh, leather wearing classes, and cloth wearing classes. However, in the beginning of the game, plate wearers wear mail until level 40, and mail armor wearers wear leather until level 40. So at, at, at the beginning of the game, there are actually a lot of classes that wear leather. There are actually four. So, but we're going to split them up as they are at level 40. So, so let's start with the heavy heavy plate wearing classes. I'm one of them, which is warrior. Uh, there are there is one other called paladin. But we're going to start with the warrior. The warrior is like the default class. They can pretty much wield any weapon possible. They can tank. Um, every class has three talent trees or specializations that they can put points into. We're not level 10 yet, but when we hit level 10, we'll get points to put in abilities or specialties that make our characters unique. So the three classes of warrior are Fury, 
arms, and protection. Protection is your tank class, so using swords and shields, while <coughs> um, so using swords and shields, and they they benefit. Their main job is to is to get monsters to try to kill them. They're protectors. They protect other people. They protect DPSers, and they protect healers. There are three roles in this game. There are DPS, tank, and healer. Warriors can fill the role of DPS or tank. If you want to be a tank, though, you want to specialize in protection trees, protection specialty. And I'll go over that when we get this when we get to trees. We're not there yet, but. When war so warriors can fill the role of DPS or tank, and um, I'm right now nothing. I am under level 10. When you're under level 10, you have no specialization. Okay. So warriors, if you like to wear heavy armor, if you like to wield any possible weapon in the game, even guns and bows, to, as a ranged weapon, you want to be a warrior. Okay. If you want to be a tank, warrior may be the maybe the job that you want to fulfill. Maybe the thing you want to do. Okay. Or uh, they're also very, very savage. Um, okay, uh, savage um, fighters. So they're actually good in melee. They're, they're kings of melee combat, close quarters combat. Okay. The next class that wears heavy armor, plate at level forty, is the paladin. Paladins in vanilla WoW are only accessible to alliance. They can fill any role. They can fill DPS. They can fill healer, or they can fill tank. Their tank tree, just like a warrior, is called protection spec. It it specializes on shields, shields, and one-handed weapons, uh, and they are protecting others from harm, and they holding aggro from monsters, so making monsters attack them. Another option is retribution, which is which is a DPS spec, which you do damage, and finally, you have a spec called holy, which allows, allows you to heal other people. So as a paladin, you can be anything you want. You can fulfill any role. They're jack of all trades. However, you can only fulfill one role at a time. If you want to switch into a new role, you have to spend gold, okay? And that'll wipe all your all your abilities, all your special talents, and you'll have to re-put points in different talents, okay? So that's the paladin. Before we go to the next class, I want to go over what I'm doing right now. I'm doing this quest called Scavenge Goods, where all it is is picking up things. There, there are three types of quests in this game. There are killing stuff quests, where you kill monsters of a certain amount. There are gathering quests, which you go get something, which I'm doing now. I'm getting these things. I'm getting s scavenged goods. And then there's the combination or other, I like to call. Combination is go kill 12 monsters and go pick me six flowers. Okay? So you can combine those two things, or there's other. A good example of other are, is this one. Samuel's remains buried. I have to go kill this guy, but it's not telling me to kill him. It's telling me to pick something up from him and bring it back. So it's kind of a combination of killing and picking up. Okay? Alright, so I need more of these scavenge goods, but, but I want to keep talking. We have a lot to cover in this episode. The next classes are classes that wear male armor, the, the next lower level of armor down. And those are shamans and hunters. Shamans are only available... Um, to the Horde in Vanilla WoW. Um, they are... They can be healers, they can be DPS, and they can kind of sort of tank. They're not very good. I wouldn't recommend tanking as a Shaman, maybe in lower level dungeons. Um, but their three talent trees are... Uh, they, they rely heavily on totems, so they're kind of like a Shaman. So think of like a Shaman like, like a shaman in some kind of uh, uh, like a warrior race or like one of these Amazonian races or something that have a shaman or a medicine man, okay? They use enchantment and totems and spells to kind of do their damage. So there's there's three options. There's the, uh, there's the elemental tree, which is a ranged DPS, a caster DPS that uses lightning bolts. There's enhancement, which is a melee damage or that kind of sort of tanky thing I was talking about. We'll go into that later. Where they specialize on using one-handed weapons or two-handed weapons that do damage. And the finally one is Restoration. Restoration is a healing spec. Healing others. Giving them life. Taking, uh, healing their damage. Okay? 
the the uh, so this is our target right here, Samuel Phipps, and I'll show you what, what I mean. So I'm gonna pull him over here. I'm gonna start attacking him. Um, not saying what's gonna happen as soon as I kill him. So shaman is a, is a good choice. It kind of is the paladin of the horde, I guess you could say. They're not very good tanks. Neither are paladins really. Um, uh, warriors are the premier tank, tank class in this game. Secondary choice would be a druid. Um, but they're good. Um, they're very powerful. I like them a lot. So I picked up Samuel's remains. This is the quest item, and I'm going to bury it in Marla's grave. We'll do that now. I'm going to kill these guys real quick as well, so while I'm talking. So shamans are very good um, all around. They're a very fun class. It's what I would call a hybrid class. They can fill a lot of roles. Um, uh, okay, so that's shamans. And again, these are very brief introductions. Um, I will go into more in-depth introductions as the game goes on, but as these tutorials go on. The next, cl so if you, so if you, so let's go back for a second. So if you like healing and you may want to try doing damage both as ranged and melee and have like a little of a hybrid class, and uh, Sean may be the pick for you. The next one is a very interesting one. It's a hunter. It's one of the two classes in the game that have pets or or uh, additional or, or a little ally you can have with to do damage. Hunters are skilled ranged combat, although they do have a little bit of a, a melee combat as well. Um, they specialize in bows, guns, ranged, tar ran ranged abilities, okay? Um, they're like your ranger class, I guess you could say, like Legolas, right? Um, but what they have, they have a pet, that's one key difference. <clears throat> so, the hunter sends in their pet and then attacks from the target from the range. Uh, there are different kinds of hunters. There are hunters that want to increase their pet damage. They're called Beast Mastery Hunters, and their pet damage is very, very important to them. There are Marksman Hunters, which are really rely on their ability to their ranged attacks. They still have pets, but they're, 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 they're most of their damage comes from the ranged attacks. And then there's survival, which is kind of like a mix of everything. It's like, you know, you, you're, you're, your pet's okay, your range is okay, and so is your melee damage is kind of okay. You're kind of a mix between everything. So if you want to attack from range, and if you want to have a pet, target a, a, a pet, and you don't want to worry about casting time and casting spells, Hunter is the choice for you. Okay? Let's move into our two leather leather wearing classes. They were they were leather the entire game, um, and they are the rogue and the druid. I am forsaken. Rogues are your stealthy characters. Okay, they can um, they can go into the shadows and become invisible, literally invisible. You can't see them. And they can a surprise attack. They specialize in poisons, and daggers, and a cloak and dagger kind of thing, right? Um, a lot of people like rogues. Because they're great in PvP, you can hide from stuff, and you can go do mission objectives by, like, hiding and, like, and sneaking through enemy lines, okay? They wear leather armor, so they're not very high armored, and they use either daggers or one-handed weapons, so all one-handed weapons, but they can specialize in daggers. And they have three different trees, like everybody else, and it's that's assassination, subtlety, and, um, uh, excuse me, one second. So let's see what we have here. Uh, why am I forgetting the last one? Assassination, subtlety, and um... Oh god. Combat. Combat rogues. Okay? Embrace so, combat rogues are like your... They can use swords... To One-handed swords, they can... Di oh, they dual wield, so they have a weapon in each hand. And they specialize in like the longer one-handed weapons, like swords, axes, and and, uh, and maces. And they're more uh, not cloak and dagger. They're more they still stealth, but they're more combat oriented. They don't want to hide too much. They hide to make a surprise attack, and then they stay out of stealth. Assassination and and subtlety are more cloak and daggery, where one one of them is more poison focused, while another one is more um, again these. I'm not a master on, on rogues. My brother is. He'll probably he'll uh, talk about this a little bit more. But um, let's well, dig there. So I'm level five, um, and we have. I'm gonna clear my bags while I'm talking and sell some stuff. Um, and we have another quest to kill Scholar Crusaders. Um, so rogues are really if you, if you like stealth, if you like stealthing around in, in the shadows. And that's all you like to do, and you like to like sneak up on people and stuff, and and uh, and be like a spy, an agent, that kind of thing. You want to be a rogue. Druids are very, very interesting. Our next class we're going to talk about. Druids are 
kind of a jack of all trade. They are shapeshifters. They can change into animals. Change into animals. They can fulfill four roles, unlike any other class. They can fulfill four. They can be ranged damage, melee damage, tank, and healer. But they only have three talent trees, so it depends on how you put your points into these talent trees. So there's a restoration tree, which is the healer. There is a feral tree, which can be either tank or or melee combat. The melee combat is a cat, and the uh, tank is, is a bear form. Depending on what points you put into that tree, depends if you're a better bear or a better uh, cat, a sneaky cat. Now the cat, which is interesting, is the cat can also stealth, just like a rogue. So if you want to be like kind of like a rogue, but that's not the only thing you want to do, Druid may be the choice for you. Again, and they can also tank, and they can heal. Very, very, of course, the most hybrid of the classes. Okay? So, um, very, very interesting, um, interesting, uh, uh choice. Something I haven't talked about real guys before I get into the cloth wearers, let's go back to our warrior here. We have an ability called Charge that I haven't been using because I've been talking my butt off. Charge is a great ability, and one of the things that makes warrior a warrior. I can run in on the target very fast and build up Rage. Rage is very important to use in our abilities. So let's charge in, and I automatically have enough Rage to use my Battle Shell. Okay? Really nice. I can get my Rend up very quickly. And then start pumping holy uh, heroic strikes on it. Charge is very important when you're soloing. Because not only does it give you a, a kind of like a surprise attack, but it also builds rage. So if you look at my rage bar right now, it's at 0%. Watch after I charge this warrior, this Scar, scar Convert. Okay? I go up in rage automatically. And I can start fighting. Very awesome. Alright, so we've got all our classes except for the Clothies. Cloth wearers wear the, wear the lowest armor. Uh, they wear cloth armor, okay? And there are three. There are priests, mages, and warlocks. <coughs> priests are the premier healing class in the game because they have two healing trees. Out of their three trees, two of them are healing. Holy is like a pretty much an all-out healer. Discipline tree is kind of like a, it's a different kind of healing, but it also gives them some offensive capability, so it's kind of in the middle. Whereas Shadow is their DPS spec. This is their ranged casting DPS spec. All of them are viable. All of them are awesome. It just depends on what you want to do. You want to be a, a ranged attacker that, is, that can heal themselves very well. Can't really heal others very well. At low levels they can. Or do you want to be a healer? A really 100% all the way healer. Priest may be the option for you. Okay. The next cloth wearing class is the Warlock. They're kind of like a hunter and a mage mixed together. A warlock, in addition to being able to use pets, like a hunter, also has castable abilities, uh, spells. So there are demonology warlocks, which are very much like beast mastery hunters. They focus on their pets more than anything else. There are affliction warlocks, which focuses on diseases and damage over time effects. So dots, damage over time. And then there are Destruction Warlocks, which still have a pet, but they're more oriented than fire damage. Kind of like a fire mage. Lastly, we have the mage. Mages are um, damage-dealing cloth classes that can either specialize in frost damage, fire damage, so it can be a frost mage or a fire mage, or arcane magics. Arcane is not really a standalone spec. It's very hard to be a standalone arcane mage. However, arcane talents are very important in building up either your frost or your fire talents. It's kind of like a dump, a dump tree. So you build up your fire talents, and then you start putting points in the arcane tree to make your fire damage or your frost damage stronger. So there's all your classes. I know it's, it's a very, very quick info. Uh, I really overload you with a lot of information, but it really gives you an overview of what you want to do. Do you want to wear heavy armor? Do you want to wear medium armor? Do you want to wear light armor? Do you want to attack from range? Or do you want to attack close up? Do you want to be able to tank and protect other people? Or do you want to be able to heal them? These are your first initial questions when starting the game, guys. What role, this is a role playing game, what role do you want to fulfill? Tank, healer, DPS. After that, what kind of armor do you want to wear? Do you want to be able to stealth? Do you want to have a pet? These are the questions you have to ask yourself. Okay? 
Um, next thing I want to cover is factions. Okay, there are two factions in the game. It is not good and evil, as most people may think. It's a lot more gray than that. The Horde and the Alliance are the two factions. The Horde make up um, are the Orcs, the Tauren, the Undead, which I am here, and the uh, Trolls. Okay. The Alliance make up are the Humans, Dwarves, Night Elves, and Gnomes. So if you played Classic Warcraft, Warcraft 1 through 3, the real-time strategy versions of the game, you will know these races probably pretty well. And honestly, guys, it comes down to what flavor of ice cream do you like? Do you like chocolate or vanilla? I'm not going to say which one's which because I don't know. But that's basically what you're asking yourself. Each one has a very different story, a very different set of lore. Each race is very different. Um, and we'll go into races probably in the next video because we're running out of time on this one. These are the questions you want to ask yourself. Um, which one do you kind of want to play? And when you start your character selection screen, not only do you get detailed information about your race, or your, your, sorry, your class, but you also get detailed information about your faction and your race that you're choosing. I prefer Horde because I like their story. It's a, it's, it's a story of triumph. It's a story of not knowing where you belong in the world. It's a, it's a story of pain, suffering, slavery, uh, overcoming the odds. Whereas the Alliance story is the protectors of the realm, the... Uh, status quo, the, you know, but each, each side, believe it or not, has their own darkness and secrets. It's not all, it's not all, you know, cakes and candy and lollipops in the Alliance side, and it's not fire and brimstone on the Horde side. There's a lot of depth, there's a lot of interesting things in each, in each one. Um, so, don't just take it as, oh, it's good and evil. No, 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 no. Please read up on, on, on each one. <coughs> Try to understand the lore. And then try to understand which, what each is trying to say, and which, what, what, what are the ends of each, you know. What, what, what would you feel more at home playing? That's the question you have to ask yourself. And then look at the races. The look of the races is very important. Would you be happy playing an undead for the whole game? Would you be happy playing a human the whole game? The whole game? Uh, real quick, guys. These are my rewards for this quest. I want to start doing more damage. Uh, I will start tanking as well. I want to keep. I'm going to actually keep my sword and shield because I may have to tank at some point. But I'm going to keep. I'm going to start getting this Forsaken Bastard Sword because it has a higher damage per second. So if you look, it has 2.7 damage per second as opposed to 1.1 damage per second um, in my sword. So uh, I want to. I want to get that. Okay. Next video, I'm going to go over. Not only am I going to go over. Um, um, races, but I'm also going to go into a little bit more of the character sheet, so we're, we're going to go into that as well, okay? And we'll talk about that next 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 episode. So I want to take this sword. I want to right click on it in my inventory. And you'll notice my sword and my shield got unequipped because I just use a two-handed weapon, guys. I need both hands to use it, and I'll talk about that as well. Beware. Before we log off, I'm going to complete this quest though, which is the last quest of the starting area. And is to kill this guy, this, um, <coughs> this, um, this, uh, what's his name? Sorry. Uh, Kevin, Mevin Korgal, who is carrying documents that I have to get. So again, it's not about killing the guy, it's about looting the documents off of him. So yeah, guys, it, it, factions are a really interesting thing, and it's really something that I take very to heart. I love the Horde. I've always played the Horde, I love their story, and honestly... I don't like the Alliance. I actually have a very strong hatred for them. Um, and that's healthy. That's what you want to play. This is a game of war, guys. It's a game of picking sides. It's a game of really getting into it. Getting into the story. I respect some Alliance characters very much. But for me, I feel at home in the Horde. I always have since I've since I played this game. So, Okay. I'm going to get some Rage up and get my Battle Shout up before I start fighting this guy. Because he has a lot more health than everyone else. And... I have to start training swords. Uh, we'll talk about this a little bit more next episode, but basically, I've been using a one-handed weapon the whole time, and I was getting points in using one-handed swords. Now I'm using a two-handed sword. I want to get some points in using this before I start killing this big guy, because I don't want to miss on him. And I want to maximize my damage. <clears throat> Again, we'll talk about this next episode, um, but 
basically when you start when you start using a different type of weapon when you're going from one-handed sword to two-handed sword you have to get your perfect your player more proficient in using that okay we briefly covered this a little bit in the first episode but we're going to go in more in depth next episode okay all right he's got two bodyguards with him so what i'm going to do is i'm going to fight one more guy get some rage up before i go in there So if you notice, my rage pulls get a little bit higher now. And now I'm going to charge in, and I'm going to take this guy out, okay? I need to get I'm going to loot him as fast as I can. Why? Because these guys are going to hit me really hard. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I'm going to loot him, and I'm going to run. Because otherwise I'm going to die. If you've only played re the recent retail expansions of Warcraft, you're kind of spoiled. <laughs> uh, you can really get beat up pretty bad in these in the, in the newer parts of the game. In the older game, excuse me. Alright, so I've got my Scholar Crusade documents. I'm going to go turn these in. And then we're going to move into the next episode, guys. So, um, next episode we're going to be covering um, ra uh, excuse me, class, uh, yeah, races, and we're going to go over more of the character sheet, and the character, all these tabs that are underneath the character, okay? So I'm going to turn this in. What would you ask of dead? I get a new shield. I'm actually going to replace my other shield. I'm going to put it here so I know which one's which, and I'm going to sell this one. And now we have a new quest. Deliver the Scarlet Crusade documents to Executor Zyglin in Brill. Brill is outside the starting zone. We finally made it, guys. We're going outside the starting zone. Yay. I'm going to sell this stuff. What is it? I don't need this. And I don't need water because I don't have mana. Okay? I'm not a mana user. I'm going to sell that. Farewell. So I got my two handed weapon. Really excited about that. Uh, start doing some more damage. And, guys, thanks a lot. This is part two next part again we're going to be going over some more things classes um, and um, excuse me races I keep saying that races and character info if you ever play Dungeons and Dragons you're going to love this next episode because it goes into all the math that we have to do by hand WoW does it for us in a computer um, and everything is done in a split second so it's kind of cool so Melderon is going to wave goodbye to you guys right now he's thanking you guys for joining him and I will see you next time in episode 3 of WoW Tut Vanilla WoW Tutorial. Thanks everyone.